Hi, I'm Jason Gorber, and we're here looking at the Samsung S92C OLED. It's quite exciting for me. I've been an OLED fan now for many years. I've had, I guess, um, my first major OLED set I got um, almost a decade ago now. <laughs> it's a fortune. Um, but uh, the technology has really uh, improved, come down in price, and it's really nice for me to see a company like Samsung, which has long been part of the OLED game, just on mobile form factor for them to actually be sort of diving into on the television front. They were um, really big on the LED side, which they still are. Many of their flagship models are still LED um, as opposed to OLED. Um, emissive versus transmissive is a whole it's a whole uh, complicated thing that um is is conducive for another video but let's suffice it to say that by going to the w oled um um form uh they they're really showing that they can compete with um the best of the oled manufacturers out there um again it gets very complicated between samsung display the company that makes the displays and samsung televisions um the televisions are now using the displays from samsung display um using w oled which is actually a quite a fascinating um transformation of the oled landscape essentially what it does is that it it is all blue oleds um and then it uses their um uh, quantum dot technology to essentially change some of the blue OLEDs um, to red and green subpixel on a subpixel basis. Very complicated way of saying that you're going to get a much better color uniformity and also much more um, um, extensive brightness. It's actually um, a pretty big leap in terms of uh, OLED. OLED has always had unbelievably good blacks. That's um, the deal, because uh, the, essentially the pixel can be on or off, no required backlighting. Um, like plasma, like in some way CRT, um, each individual pixel is um, either on or off, which means when it's black, it's black. It's just no light whatsoever, which is unbelievable for when you're somebody like me, who is, you know, frankly, a movie guy more than anything else, not a gamer, not anything, um, that stuff, wants the clarity of picture. You simply cannot get that using any other technology that matches what OLED can do. One thing that OLED was not especially awesome at was very, very bright scenes. Now, relative contrast comes into play when you have something that's like super bright it makes the blacks look a little darker, if that makes any sense. And when things are like the black level is almost zero, which is what you get with um, OLED, it meant that you didn't need this sort of crazy, super, super bright whites uh, like you get with uh, um, um, uh, some LED sets where they can literally be almost torch what's, what's going on. Those were uh, the simple way of thinking about it, that in a bright room you would put an LED in, in a dedicated home theater you would put an OLED. That's no longer necessarily the case because with OLEDs you're getting um, peak luminance of um, 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 more than sufficient, um, especially in HDR presentation, to actually have the impact when required um, of, of the brightness, but also still have that incredible sumptuous black. It is, um, it is um, a joy to behold. Um, the TV itself is, um, you know, it's one of these razor thin things that you get with um, OLED. It's uh, the, the remote, I gotta say, the remote is, uh, is okay. It's this tiny little remote, it actually has a solar panel on the back, which is quite nice. It, it doesn't light up, so the dark, it's kind of hard to see. You gotta sort of feel around where where um, um, uh, the individual buttons are. There are specific buttons for many of the key streamers, Prime, Disney, Netflix, and the Samsung TV Plus, which brings up the main menu. Um, built in, like all of these smart TVs, are a number of um, specific functions. Uh, if we actually go to the home here, you can see that we have Netflix, Disney, Apple TV, all the usual. We have HDMI. We have all these elements, and you can see even here we can actually specifically target individual um, uh, uh, elements that are actually drawn from the various streaming services. Uh, connected devices, you can see here that we have uh, different HDMI inputs. I have I have my, my network storage coming up because it has both Ethernet and Wi-Fi. It allows me to quickly and easily play um, elements um, that way. And the settings mode is okay. It takes a little bit to actually get into the all settings mode, which not everyone is um, um, uh, going to dive into. But when somebody like me um, is, is going uh, over and over trying to get this stuff uh, together, it's, 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 I, I wish there was um, a, a bit of a, a better shortcut to get there. 
see it's like you know you're just trying oh and i just turn it off so one reasonably quick way of getting into settings is if i hit the uh settings uh dock and then i have to go all the way over here into all settings this is how i get to this sort of much more comfortable page you can see that on the original settings page i can adjust some of these things individually picture clarity etc um but the all settings, um, I wish there was a slightly faster way of me getting into this, but you know, I'm somebody who actually tweaks this stuff on a more regular basis than others. Um, sound, I actually have it coming through uh, my individual sound bar. Um, the built-in speakers are okay. Um, at best, um, uh, most televisions, you're gonna wanna have either external speakers or some sort of sound bar. Um, but this is really interesting for me. The picture mode, movie calibrated. How does it calibrate it? I have a Samsung phone. And so this actually allowed me to actually go in here and use the Samsung phone. And I simply place the phone on the screen and it dials in through a number of um, um, colors using my phone's camera to actually calibrate it. Fantastic, I love it. Um, one of the nice things of actually having sort of the closed ecosystem that I think many people are used to with the uh, fruit-based manufacturer um, who don't make a television, I guess, yet. Um, uh, if I go into expert settings, you can see uh, we have the normal um, uh, run-of-the-mill um, settings, but I've done stuff like picture clarity settings and contrast enhancer off. Um, I, for, for the most part, for mo most um, televisions I actually find to get the purest uh, mode, most of this stuff actually is disabled. My, my uh, general trick is you buy the best bloody television you can get and then turn off most of the features that, that television comes with. Um, that being said, the uh, Color Tone Warm 2 is obviously the balance. We have the gamma set to ST2084. Instead of, um, um, on, on other things, it'll actually be BT1886, um, uh, based on what your actual source uh, is. Color space settings auto, you can see peak brightness. We can actually go here and actually adjust the individual peak brightness um, and all those elements. You have in this picture mode, filmmaker mode, which is fantastic. You can see a slight difference, probably not on this camera. Filmmaker mode is slightly redder. Movie calibrated has um, um, a slightly more natural thing because it's been calibrated with my phone. But nonetheless, filmmaker mode out of the box is the first thing you should do on any television that actually employs this because filmmaker mode simply sets almost everything for what you want it to be. You can see if I go to standard or echo or even dynamic, it just torches it. The colors become super saturated. It's the kind of stuff that looks good under fluorescent lights, but not great um, uh, when you're actually wanting to watch stuff with the accuracy intended. But in movie calibrated mode, um, I've been able to set pretty much everything that I want. The sound mode, again, the same thing. I can actually go into here and dial in what I actually want. It has eARC, which is allowing me to use an HDMI cable to actually connect and have um, um, back and forth communication that way. eARC is the uh, enhanced version of ARC, audio return channel. I can uh, adjust it to PCM or bit, uh, bitstream if um, I required. I can actually adjust my audio delay, should I wish etc. In other words, right here, it's all available and really easy to use. Once you're actually here, um, it works very, very well. You can see, speaking of the fruit company, you can actually um, add, if you have the device AirPlay uh, going with that way, we can add Bluetooth and actually um, both transmit and receive Bluetooth. It's really, really phenomenal. So if I go here, we're just like watching a random um, uh, YouTube, uh, I can actually go, if I click on home, you can see that I have many options that um, uh, immediately built into the television set. You don't need, you don't require an external box. It's a little bit strange to actually navigate for me to go back down. And um, I mean, I have HDMI uh, one here, but if I did want to go to my connected device, I got to go sort of all the way over and then all the way down. It's a minor thing, but again, just like that all settings, I'm just finding a little bit it's taking me a little bit more time than required. Another thing is when I place certain um, um, video files off of my um, network storage, 
I'm actually finding that I have to, every single time the video is uh, disable captioning. It's kind of interesting on an accessibility front, the caption is actually there on by default, but nonetheless, it's a little bit frustrating that every single time it doesn't remember that setting. It's little tiny tweaks like that, that I think um, I need a tiny bit of improvement, but there's stuff that we can actually get um, going there. Again, this is the quick settings mode. We have things like, again, there's, there's I can quickly change back and forth between my different um, uh, modes, sleep timer, the Bluetooth. So there is this sort of quick setup, but for me to actually go in and tweak the stuff, that, that's where we actually have to go to all settings. And I kind of wish this all settings was sort of at the front. It's little tiny things like that. Now, in terms of picture quality, in terms of all that stuff, it's excellent. It's, um, I could not be more pleased um, with uh, how, how the elements all come together. Um, uh, just out of the box in filmmaker mode is pretty good. With my phone, it is uh, very good. It is not a replacement for me, somebody who's very, very, you know, not critical, but very interested in getting the most pure color. This is something that I would actually probably get professionally calibrated if it was my set. Unfortunately, I do not get to keep this. Um, but, but you can actually go in here, and again, as we talk about um, expert settings, is I can actually go in here and tweak individual elements um, um, with, with uh, individual calibration however I would like. Uh, if um, this calibration is obviously set that way, but if I go to filmmaker mode, go to expert settings, I can actually go in here, uh, change individual color tones, do color space settings, do specific, you can see here, that I can tweak to custom and actually adjust RGB levels and all these other advanced stuff that um, um, uh, individuals um, who actually have color spectrometers and stuff like that would actually be able to do. Um, in other words, you get the best of all worlds um, out of the box. It's a very, very decent, it's about 95% of the way there. With my phone, I'd say it's about 96, 97% of the way there. And for that extra 3%, I would want someone to come in and actually do all the heavy lifting and the tweaking. Once eco mode's off, that is something that um, you wanna do for the more accurate uh, picture quality and turning off stuff like all motion clarity and all of those other elements that um, help to smooth picture, but sort of don't do what I want to do in order for um, me to get the most accurate picture. You can see this, um, um, these individual television channels actually come up sort of automatically um, um, on, on Samsung. Uh, all, all these uh, these are sort of internet TV channels that are, are there, and just as you're in the menu, that's, they come up by default. Um, I, I can go into the individual um, elements. Here's Netflix. Um, here's Disney. None of this stuff um, um, uh, uh, has, 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 has remained uh, being connected. But you can see here, right from the front, um, we actually have um, the ability on the set to have, in a quick way, all the elements that you actually want and then be able to go back and forth. Really, really excellent. You have Alexa or Bixby. Alexa is the Amazon version of the virtual assistant, Bixby being the uh, Samsung version. So if you um, wish to do that, or I can just go to the internet and I can see what's going on with um, um, actually surfing whatever it is that I actually want to surf. So if I want to do a Google search, I can actually do that right on my television. Remember, this is essentially a giant 4K monitor. So you could, if you're feeling particularly crazy, run it as a TV. So overall, I think that the TV is very, very good. I'm extremely pleased to see what Samsung has done on this front. Um, the picture difference between this and my um, existing TV from another manufacturer, which is significantly older, this is definitely brighter. I'm definitely getting more impact. One thing it doesn't do that I wish, wish to God old, um, that the old OLEDs did, which is 3D. Um, uh, no modern television these days actually has 3D capabilities. 3D on OLED was an absolute joy. Yes, you actually were limited in some ways about peak brightness, but the ability to actually do that um, to watch uh, 3D Blu-ray, especially with still modern releases coming out, things like Avatar 2, it will be coming out on 3D Blu-ray. It's a shame that um, um, that the TV manufacturers have moved on and focused on other things other than elements that for certain directors is absolutely critical to the experience of the film. It's a shame that 4K doesn't actually have a 3D mode. There's no such thing as a UHD disc, um, UHD title, um, that actually has 3D, but that again, 
story for another video. Right now, what we're looking at is how excellent um, this television is. And I have to say, I'm extremely, extremely pleased with it. And if you're in the market for a television, 65 inch or, um, or whatever their size within their range, I definitely think that the 92C is the way to go. Thanks so much for watching. Please let us know in the um, comments if you have any questions um, about the set. I've been playing with it for um, um, several days now. And um, speaking of playing, actually, before I wrap up, I will say, uh, I never think of it because I'm not a gamer, but for gamers, OLED is definitely the way to go because of the speed, because it has low latency mode, because of all the elements, the pixels going on off, you don't have the smearing. So if you're a gamer, this is an extraordinary set and all four HDMI inputs actually allow you to go up to 144 Hertz. So for gamers, I shouldn't forget you. I apologize if this is at the end of the video, but that is something um, to worry about. For me, who's just worried about the best bloody picture possible, I hook it up with my 4K player or I watch 4K stuff on streaming or, um, or um, files off my network storage. This for me is a TV that would absolutely be on the, um, um, on the top of my list to consider if I was looking at a TV of this size. Thanks so much for watching. Um, uh, as I said, let us know in the comments and we will see you next video. All the best, take care.